Hi, Mr. Morris here talking to you about error checking methods in the communications topic. So far we've looked at a communication system framework where there is a source or the sender and the destination or the receiver. The medium carries that signal through a series of layers and transfers that along a message medium to its intended destination. Now in that time there must be a way the protocol deals with errors. Sometimes with TCP IP for instance, if a message is transmitted and not received, the source or sending computer will often retransmit. In this small video we will look at three main error checking methods which are listed in the syllabus. The first one is parity check and is the simplest form of error checking method. The second is a block error checking method called checksum where data is transmitted in blocks. This is often used for copying files from one part of a computer to another for instance one folder to another. The final and most reliable error checking method is cyclic redundancy check where if it's used in 32-bit format is capable of picking up 99.6% of errors. So three methods, parity, often used in older modems, checksum, used internally within the computer, and cyclic redundancy check, the most reliable error checking method, used for checking internet connection errors. So with parity check, it was used in early uh, data communication and used by older modems where they were transmitting predominantly text in 7-bit ASCII code. There were small packets of data with 7 bits and they required only a simple form of error checking method. As stated, much of the data was text so an incorrect char character in a, in a spot wasn't a significant problem. But today, with modems that uh, transmit and receive larger packets of data, more sophisticated check techniques are needed, such as checksums and CRC. The idea of a parity bit check is that it adds an extra bit, or an eighth bit, to every character of bit transmitted. The sending and receiving devices must agree on which parity checking method they will be using prior to transmission. There are three agreed parity check methods. They are odd, even, or none. Now, in fact, none is not really a parity check method because it doesn't actually check for errors. So we'll focus just on, on odd and even. With odd parity, if the devices agree on odd parity, then the total number of ones in the byte must total an odd number, including the parity bit. Within even parity, if the devices agree on even parity prior to transmission, then the total number of ones in the byte must total an even number, including the parity bit. The problem with parity bit check is that it's unreliable and will often only pick up 50% of transmission errors. We'll see a bit later on that the idea of bit swapping can mean that parity check doesn't actually discover the incorrect data bits within the byte. Okay, so I'm going to do an example of parity check here. And as you're aware, there's a source computer and a destination computer. The source computer has decided to send this data packet as even parity. And in a simple form, it's a 7-bit ASCII code accompanied by a parity bit. Now the parity bit is purely for error checking and we'll talk about how that calculation works to devise the parity bit. So in this case if I work through the 7-bit ASCII code from left to right we can see that there is a 1, a 0, a 1, another 1, a 0, a 1 and a 0. Now remembering that the source computer has decided to send this data packet as even parity, then the destination computer must receive it as even parity. So it performs a calculation upon receiving the data. 
what it does is it calculates or counts the number of ones. So we count the number of ones here, one, two, three, and four. So therefore the parity bit must be zero to total a even number. One, two, three, four, four is an even number, so therefore the data packet would be successfully received by the destination computer. In example two, you will see the parity bit has changed to one, and I'll show you how that has come about. So the source computer is sending as even parity, and we can see here, there is one, two ones, three ones, four ones, a zero, five ones, and another zero. So in the seven bit ASCII code, we have a total of five ones and two zeros. And as 5 is an odd number, the parity bit must be 1 to total 6, which is an even number. If the parity bit was 0, the destination computer would receive the uh, header of the data packet saying that it was even parity, would perform the calculation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and with a parity bit of 0, it would basically say that it was incorrect because it was sent as even parity and it calculated an odd parity. In example 3, the source computer is transmitting as odd parity. The receiving computer or destination computer would also receive that request of odd parity and would perform the same calculation. So you can see here the parity bit is set as 1. Let's see how that is derived. We have a data packet of 1, another 1, another 1, another 1, and three zeros. So if we add the total number of 1s in the 7-bit ASCII code, there are 4. Now as 4 is an even number, and the source computer is sending as odd parity, the parity bit must be a 1 to result in an odd number, which is 5. In example 2, you will see the parity bit has changed to 0, and we'll look at why. Again, the source computer is sending as odd parity, and therefore the destination computer would receive that request as odd parity. It would then perform the same calculation by adding up all the 1s. So we'll see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 1s, a 0, five ones and a zero. Now as the number of ones in the 7-bit ASCII code add up to five, which is an odd number, the parity bit must be zero. So you can see that it is a fairly simplistic form of error checking method and one of the problems is that bit swapping can occur. If one of the ones in the data byte is swapped with one of the zeros, then the parity wouldn't change and the error is not detected. Any byte with an even number of errors will be undetected and it's rarely used in modern communication protocols because it is only 50% accurate. In next lesson I will talk to you about checksum and cyclic redundancy check. In the meantime I'd like you to read the accompanying notes that I have given you on those two error checking methods.